All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be going over a super important concept, the time value of money. So define the time value is, is this concept where money that you have now is worth more now than that same amount of money in the future. Um, and that is because that is due to potential earning capacity of that money. That might seem a little bit confusing, but we're gonna make it super simple for you. So for example, say that I have $100 today, right? That hundred dollars right now is worth more than in 10 years, to put it simply. All right. And there's a way to mathematically calculate the future value of money um, or the present value of money that's in the future. And we're going to be going over that. So in order to determine future value, um, the rate of return, number of periods, or the present value of money, you, you need to know three things. And Excel, Excel really uh, does a good job in calculating this. Instead of memorizing a complicated formula, um, Excel has the functions built in. So right now we're going to be going over how to calculate the future value of $100. So that $100 today, how much it's worth in let's say 10 years. So what we need to know is the present value, and we'll just label that PV. So the present value will be $100. Let's format this. Um, it'll be $100 today. All right, and let's say, um, so we need to know, the next thing we need to know is know the rate of return. So let's say that we get a 10% return on this $100 for N per or number of periods, let's say for 10 years, all right? And so we're trying to figure out the future value of that money invested at 10% for 10 years, all right? So we just hit the equal sign, find the FV function. Um, and what you're wanting to do is put a negative in front of this um, to make it more understandable. But so you have the future value, you want the rate and then the next, the N per, and the PMT stands for payment. Uh, we're not gonna worry about that um, variable in this tutorial. That has more to do with loans and things like that. Um, so we'll go ahead and just skip that by hitting another comma and then select the present value. So this $100 invested at 10% for the next 10 years will be worth $259.37. All right, so we were able to calculate the future value of this hundred dollars uh, given the investment rate and the number of periods it will stay invested all right all right so let's say we want to do the reverse say we knew that in 10 years we could have 259 dollars and 37 cents well how much money do we need to invest today at a rate of 10 percent return for the next 10 years to get 259 dollars all right so how much do we need to invest today? So we'll go ahead and just reverse this. So we'll need to know the future value. Uh, we'll need to know the rate, the number of periods, and that'll be to find the present value. So the future value we'll just say is this 259.37. Um, the rate will again be 10%, 10 years. So we'll put another negative sign in front of this function. Um, we'll choose the rate, number of periods, skip the payment, and go to future value. And we'll see that if we want $259.37 in 10 years invested at 10%, we need to today invest $100. All right. Let's say that we know how much money we're starting with, so we know our present value. Um, we know how much we want in the future um, and we know how long we want to take to get there, right? So we're trying to figure out the rate at which something needs to be invested. Um, so we we're figuring out the future value, the present value before. Now let's say we want to figure out the rate. So let's say that we want, let's say we have $1,000 today. Um, and we want that thousand dollars to turn into five thousand dollars in let's say five years all right we'll go ahead and format this real quick so you just hit the equal and go to the rate function we'll find the number of periods 
skip the payment, go to present value. Um, and just an FYI, when doing these functions, you always need to have an, the present value or future value always needs to be negative in order for it to be more, more understandable. So we'll just make this a negative and then future value, 5,000. So we need to invest this $1,000 at a rate of 38% annually for the next five years in order to get $5,000 in the future. All right, now the last part, let's say that we had, we knew how much we had, we knew the present value, um, we knew the future value, um, and we knew the rate at which we want to invest, um, but we're trying to figure out the number of periods. So how long do we need to invest for? Um, all right, so let's say the present value today we have $1,000. We want it to turn into $10,000, all right? Um, and let's say that we're investing at an average rate of 10% per year. All right, so we will go ahead and use the end per function, um, find the rate, skip the payment, go to present value. We'll make the future value negative. Um, so we see that we need 24, 24.16 years, we'll just round it to 24 years um, in order to get $10,000. So that is essentially saying if we take the $1,000 today, invest it at a rate of 10% annually, in 24 years we will have $10,000. All right, so just like that, we figured out how to find the future value, present value, the rate of return, um, number and the number of periods um, given three of these four variables. So mathematically, if you have three of the four variables, you can solve for any of these, these four functions. Um, so hopefully that was quick, easy, and simple. Just a brief overview of the time value of money. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense to you. Um, it,